Hey YouTube, on this episode of South Hawk Computing, we're going to be doing an updated tutorial for tomato firmware on the ASUS RTAC68U, and that's coming up next. <laughs> What's going on YouTube? Dan from South Hawk Computing and today we're doing the updated tomato firmware tutorial for the Asus RTAC68U. Before we go any further, disclaimer time. As always, when you attempt to put any sort of third-party firmware on any device, such as this router here, you run the risk of bricking. What does bricking mean? Well, bricking means you're gonna turn it into a brick if you mess up the process. So as always, if you follow this tutorial and you end up bricking your device, I cannot and will not be held responsible. You are doing this all on your own accord. Now that we got that out of the way, let's talk a little bit about the setup here. So this router here, we got it off of eBay for a nice 35 bucks. Other things that you may or may not need, this laptop here no longer has ethernet built into them. A lot of the newer laptops won't. I have here a USB-C to ethernet adapter. And lastly, you're gonna need an ethernet cord to attach to said adapter that goes into the back of the router. So obviously a laptop here is not required. You can do this entire process with a desktop. It's just easier for filming purposes. So it's been a while since I've done these tomato firmware update uh, tutorials for pretty much any router. And currently the Asus RT AC68 series is one of my favorite ones. Why? Because these routers have a dual core CPU built in. Now there is some variation in speeds. Some of them will come with an 800 megahertz CPU 1 gigahertz and a 1.4 gigahertz CPU built into these guys. So we're not really going to go into detail on how to download the software that you'll see once we switch over to the laptop, but I will be providing links on our forums on where to get everything and it's still readily available through the manufacturer's website as well as which firmware I actually use nowadays for my routers. But let's begin. First thing you need to do is Take one end of the ethernet cord and plug it into the jack labeled number one in back of the router. The other end of the ethernet cord is gonna go into your computer. And the next step is we're going to turn on the router with this button right here. However, we're gonna hold the reset button first then power on the device. And basically we want this little logo to be flashing so we know it's in recovery mode. Okay, so now we see it's blinking down here. That means recovery mode. Another place you could check is the power LED in front. That too will also be blinking, indicating that the router is in recovery mode. So now it's time to move on to the laptop. So as I stated at the beginning of the video, I'm not gonna go through the whole details of going to the websites, downloading the software. I'm gonna provide links and our forms. A direct link to the form with this particular tutorial will be included in the description below. All right, so first thing we need to do, we installed the ASUS firmware restoration utility already, version two, a very specific version that has never steered me wrong. We're gonna open that. Again, I've downloaded all the files and you'll see the file names here. So to get everything to work, we actually have to do two variations of the tomato firmware. So the first one that I like to do, and I already have it in my downloads folder, so we're gonna hit browse and we're gonna go to downloads, is this version, the specific firmware for the AC68U. However, it's the VPN, not the all-in-one version of this firmware. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. We're gonna go to image, and that's the firmware that I want it to do for the initial flash. So what I'm gonna do here is click on upload and then I'm gonna leave this router alone for about 15 minutes. So upload and make sure it properly uploads the firmware first before I disappear. Okay, and here we see we got the successfully recovered the system. Please wait for the system to reboot. Again, I like to give it about 15 minutes. It might be 10 minutes, but we are going to show the clock. There we go. Now that I finally found a clock, I don't know why it's not showing up on Windows 11, but whatever. So I'm going to let this sit for about 10 minutes. It was started at 4.30, so we'll be back at 4.40 and time-lapse time. 
Okay, so we're back and it obviously hasn't even been 10 minutes, but this is what we're going to do next. So right away, I see two very close Wi-Fi access points. One's called Gelato and Mint Gelato, so that's pretty hilarious. This might have been the previous SSID that the router had from its other owner. Now, what we need to do is this, hold down the reset button on the router again to clear out that information. So the way we do that is we take the router, we turn it around, and we're going to hold down that same reset button for about five seconds. I did it for about six seconds. And as you see, the lights are restarting and that will clear out any of the previous information that might still be held up in memory on this router. So what ended up happening is the router ended up rebooting twice after I hit that reset button. Just be aware that it will flash again, all the lights will reset, as well as you have to wait about a minute and a half before the actual reboot slash clearing of the memory process is done. Don't expect it to come back immediately. Now if we check the available Wi-Fi networks in our area, Sometimes you'll still see the previous one, but the ones you're looking for now are Fresh Tomato 24 and Fresh Tomato 50. That tells me that the previous settings have been wiped from memory, so we're good in that regard. A couple things could happen here too. The memory is cleared, but not thoroughly cleared or completely wiped with all the variables out of its uh, little internal memory here. You may not be able to get to it immediately. So let's see if we could try doing it through ethernet first. And the way to do that is typing 192.168.1.1 into the web browser and let's see if that actually works and it does and it's looking for a username and password so the default usually is root and the password is admin nice now sometimes you'll find this doesn't actually work through the ethernet don't panic the little cheat that you could do here to still get onto it is if you went back here found the tomato networks and joined either one of them then you'd probably be able to bring up the web interface at 192.168.1.1. So again, if the ethernet is not working, just join one of the fresh tomato networks and it will take you to this web page. The next thing I like to do after we've successfully had the first firmware flash to it is I want to completely wipe whatever's in the NVRAM because as we can see here, about 50% of it is still being consumed. So the way we do that is we scroll down to administration and then once we're in administration, we scroll down to configuration and under restore default configuration, we want to select erase all memory and NV memory thorough. And lastly, click on OK. And we're going to look at this number once it comes back. Again, 50.54% of it was being consumed with information. So let's see what happens next. So this process here takes about three minutes or so. So we'll be right back. OK, so we're back. I didn't really look at the clock and see how many minutes it's been, but the timer definitely counted down from here. I'm just going to click on Continue. And excellent, so that's back. So now, previously, well, that's interesting. It's still reporting 50.54% of the NVRAM. That's like never happened. Oh, you know what's interesting? It's usually a lot higher when I clear it out. But regardless, that's something you always should do when you're switching different types of firmware, especially when you're going to the stock one to the tomato firmware. So even though there was no change in the capacity of the memory that was being used here, still highly recommend doing that, clearing it out. Last but not least, let's get it to the all-in-one firmware. And the way we're going to do that is again going to administration, scrolling down to upgrade. I'm going to choose a file, go to my downloads. And again, I'm looking for the latest version. The other one was from January of 2020. This one is 2022.5, the all-in-one version of the firmware. I'm going to click on it to highlight it, open. And I'm still going to do this. After flashing, erase all data and NVRAM memory because we're doing a significant jump from 2020 to 2022. So we always want to start it off fresh. Hit upgrade and we'll see you in three minutes.
Okay, so it just finished up. We're gonna hit continue and see if it actually shows up. Nope. So unfortunately that timer can't be trusted. So it sometimes takes about another 20 seconds or so after that counter is done. So let's hit refresh and test our luck. So yeah, it took about another 20 seconds or so for it to actually respond. Ah, now interesting, we actually have more available NVRAM, 58.44. Interesting. And there you have it. Hopefully this was a easy enough tutorial to follow. Again, all the links will be on the form, which uh, the link to the form will be in the description below. If you like what you see, please give this video a big old thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, join our forums. It would be greatly appreciated. As always, this is Dan from Southall Computing, and until the next time.